Hey guys, so what we're looking at right now is Ubuntu Touch, and I'm actually using it on the Pine Tab 2. So this is the latest and greatest Pine Tab version from Pine64. I just wanted to show some of the performance and talk a little bit about Ubuntu Touch and why it might be a good operating system choice for you. Now, first off, I do want to mention the Pine Tab 2 is in very early development. That means the Wi-Fi is not ready to use. I've actually hooked up an Ethernet right here to get data and internet, uh, but the camera's also not working on on the Pine Tab 2, but if you're interested and you find this video gets you interested in Ubuntu Touch, you can check out UB Ports website, find out what devices are already fully supported right now and all hardware supported on, and you can go ahead and find one online or otherwise, and go ahead and try out Ubuntu Touch. Now, Ubuntu Touch has some apps available. You can go to the open store right here, and in here you'll be able to check out all of the Ubuntu Touch official apps, and you can go ahead and scroll through that, search by category. So if you're looking for developer tools, you wanna to learn some programming. So development tools, that's one thing I really enjoy about Linux mobile is I can get all of my tools that I need and I can have it on my phone, put it right in my pocket, and I have a data connection for anything else I need. And everything that I'm used to on the desktop as a Linux user for most of my life, for many years I've used Linux, I've tried tens and tens of distros out over the years. And I've gotten used to many different apps. So I'm more attached to Linux applications than I am Android or iPhone applications. And I find Linux actually has a better selection of applications. Now I know what you're saying, but Ubuntu Touch doesn't have as many apps as Android or iPhone. Well, did you know that you're not locked into just Ubuntu Touch apps? That's a common misconception, and I think it's also a reason some people haven't tried Ubuntu Touch yet, is because of the fact that people think they're stuck with only the apps available in the Play Store, which is more limited. But in addition to the Play Store, you can actually run your favorite Linux desktop apps by just going into the uh, system settings. So let's go ahead and get out of there, get out of there. Go into system settings and we'll check out this, Libertine Containers. So if you want to try out your favorite Linux desktop apps on your Ubuntu Touch device, you can actually create a new container, name it, add a password if you want to, that's completely optional, and then once you've created your container as I have, I go ahead and open it, and what I can do from here is I can actually install a traditional Linux application from a dev file, or I can even go through the archives and I can search through tens of thousands of applications. So you actually have access to even more than Android will give you, and half the apps on Android are either filled with ads or they have some kind of fee for using the app. Now, of course, with open source, you have everything open source, generally doesn't have ads. So if you can, support your favorite open source developer. That's something that we can all do to make this a sustainable thing. Over the long term, we really need Linux Mobile because Linux Mobile brings diversity to the smartphone ecosystem and environment. Our smartphones are very influential and if we leave them in the hands of two single parties, the iPhone and the Android environment, well, then we're at their mercy and whatever we're forced to install, we're forced to install. Whatever we may not like about it, we have no other choice. And that's why I see Linux Mobile as really important. The diversity of choice for our smartphone operating systems helps empower the users and all of us as a collective. We have much more power personally when we have choice. And that is something I wanted to really emphasize about Linux devices and another thing that gets me really excited about Linux mobile. But as you can see, you can install all of your favorite uh, applications that you are used to on your Linux desktop right on Ubuntu Touch. And you also have some of the security enhancements that I want to show 
as we look at this. So some of the Linux mobile apps, they don't always have security out of the box. So that's up to you, but that also makes it more open. And with your root access, writable root file system, you can take care of all the things you traditionally would on many of the Linux mobile operating systems. With Ubuntu Touch, it's more secure out of the box. So if you are not very experienced with Linux, but you want to try a Linux-based operating system for your mobile device, you can take a look at some of what Ubuntu Touch has to offer. It has App Armor, has various other types of, you know, sandboxing, whitelisting, and other things built right in to the operating system. So you can take a look online and see the differences there. It comes with this nice little morph browser, which works well. You know, it functions, it works well, good performance. I haven't tested a video on it, but I did want to talk about Ubuntu Touch today. I also wanted to do a video on the Pine tab, just show you the performance and just so you can see the kind of thing that's offered on some of these Linux devices. So that's what I have today, guys. Make sure to like this video, share it with everyone. So help spread the awareness that there are other choices out there. I do believe that the future is bright for Linux mobile, and I really enjoy trying all the various operating systems available. So I'll be sure to share more of this in coming videos, and I'll also be doing videos on Graphene and Android Open Source Project as well, as that is what this video is being taken on, a new Pixel 6a phone. So uh, I'm excited to try that and share more of what I decide to do with that phone with you guys and talk about the benefits. So Make sure to like this video, subscribe now with the bell so you don't miss anything, and I'll be back later with more on Linux, open source, and now even Graphene and Android.